Hi and welcome to Unit 7 of U.S. History, titled Sectional Divisions and the Civil War. In this unit, we will dive into significant events and political dynamics that shaped the United States in the mid-19th century. So we will discuss the pivotal role of the Free Soul Party in the 1848 election, the differing perceptions of the Kansas-Nebraska Act in the North and the South, the contrasting positions of Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas on slavery, and a brief analysis of the concluding moments of the Civil War. So we'll start by examining the Free Soul Party and its impact on the election of 1848. In the mid-19th century, the issue of slavery was a central point of contention. The Free Soul Party emerged in 1848, advocating against the expansion of slavery into new territories. Their platform centered on the idea of, quote, free soil, free labor, free men, end quote, opposing the spread of slavery into Western territories acquired after the Mexican-American War. Led by figures like Martin Van Buren, the Free Soul Party aimed to prevent the extension of slavery into newly acquired territories. During the 1848 election, the Free Soul Party nominated Van Buren as their candidate. Though they didn't win the election, their impact was felt. They managed to garner support, particularly in the North, highlighting the growing divide over the issue of slavery. The Free Soul Party's influence was significant as it foreshadowed the growing tensions that would eventually lead to the Civil War. Moving on to the Kansas-Nebraska Act, this legislation further intensified the national debate over slavery. The act, proposed by Senator Stephen A. Douglas, aimed to organize the territories of Kansas and Nebraska and allow settlers there to decide the issue of slavery through popular sovereignty or through themselves, disregarding the Missouri Compromise of 1820. The act was received differently in the North and the South, in the North, it was seen as a betrayal of early agreements that restricted the expansion of slavery. Northerners were alarmed by the potential spread of slavery into new territories. The South, however, viewed the act as a way to expand slavery and protect their economic and social interests. The passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act further polarized the nation, fueling tensions that ultimately led to violent clashes in Kansas, known as Bleeding Kansas, as pro- and anti-slavery settlers clashed in their efforts to influence the territory status. We will, now, we will then compare the positions of two key figures, Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas, on the issue of slavery. Abraham Lincoln, a member of the New Republican Party, opposed the expansion of slavery into new territories. He believed in the immorality of slavery and its incompatibility with the principles of the Declaration of Independence. Lincoln argued for the containment of slavery within the states where it already existed, preventing its spread further. Stephen Douglas, on the other hand, believed in popular sovereignty, advocating that the residents of each territory should decide the issue of slavery for themselves. Douglas's position was reflected in the Kansas-Nebraska Act. He believed that allowing settlers to determine the status of slavery through popular vote was the democratic way to resolve the issue. Their differing stances on slavery became central to their famous debates, particularly during the Illinois Senate race in 1858, which further heightened the national discourse on slavery and state sovereignty. And so we will turn our focus to the final events of the Civil War. Um, it's, a, it's essential to understand that its conclusion marked a significant turning point in American history. The war, which began in 1861, was fought over issues of state rights, the expansion of slavery, and the preservation of the Union. The final events leading to the end of the Civil War included the surrender of the Confederate Army, led by General Robert E. Lee, to General Ulysses S. Grant, at a Pomatox Court House on April 9th, 1865. A Pomatox Court House, excuse me, on April 9, 1865. 
This event signaled the beginning of the end of the war, leading to subsequent surrenders by other Confederate forces. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln on April 14, 1865, just days after General Lee's surrenders, marked, surrender, marked a tragic and tumultuous end to the conflict. Lincoln's death meant that the loss of a unifying figure during the fragile period of post-war reconciliation. So, while we will explore the war in more detail, um, for the purposes of Unit 7, we will jump to the end of the war, we will analyze the final events of it, and we will understand um, how it really ended. We will discuss the key concepts of how it ended and how it was won. Further on, as we move on in the course, we'll be looking more at the intricacies of the war in a more detailed manner. So just to conclude, uh, these historical events and political, di political dynamics were pivotal in shaping the course of American history. The emergence of the Free Soul Party, uh, the controversial Kansas-Nebraska Act, the differing positions of Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas on slavery, and the final events of the Civil War all played significant roles in shaping the nation's future. Understanding these moments in history is crucial for comprehending the complexities and consequences that led to the eventual abolishment of slavery and the process of national healing and reconstruction that followed the Civil War. So thank you. This will be a very interesting unit, and I look forward to seeing you all and working with you in class. So thank you.